Hi there, welcome back. So we're having a conversation about some of the things that top CEOs and entrepreneurs face when they're dealing with creating or sustaining a business. And you might be watching this and there may be things that we can now talk about where you will recognize yourself. So uh, we'll go with Charles first. If you could give me some ideas, you've given some of the types of problems that you notice with customers of yours. Yeah, so I think the other thing that I've seen is that people start out with a passion and then they want to express that passion through building the business. And then one of the most stressful things that can happen is that they spend all their time building and running the business and they lose sight of their passion. I'll give you a very concrete example. So there's a lady that uh, I worked with for many, many years and her passion was making films. Um, she had worked to bring Yahoo to the UK uh, and then she went back and worked in New York and when 9-11 happened, gave her real pause and she reevaluated her life and said, no, if I'm gonna drop dead tomorrow, what do I really want to have done in my life? And she came back to London, she trained as a, a cinematographer, she started her own video business and she wants to make films. Over the following years, she built up a business where she had 50 people working for her. She had studios in the heart of London in a really savvy area. Um, and then in 2008, the financial crash happened and that business pretty much disappeared. But what it gave her an opportunity to do was to realize that actually she had lost sight of her desire to make films. She wasn't making films anymore. She was building a place where other people could make films, but she was never behind a camera. Right. So she completely rebuilt what she was doing um, over the following years. And now she is a filmmaker, first and foremost. Um, and she makes, she's made her first full length feature documentary. Excellent. Um, She's done a whole set of really exciting pieces of film work, but she's also got a business that keeps her uh, income coming in between projects, which is all about filmmaking. So now she's turned things upside down. I'm not here building a business to make films. I'm making films and it happens to be a business. Right, so it is about the passion. Kerr, what's your perspective? Yeah, in, in that sense, I totally agree because when you start out any business at all, and I've, I've started several, then, uh, it is about passion in the beginning. It's all excitement. It's all about finding new stuff and, and doing uh, uh, something to change the world. Uh, but what happens pretty soon is that it becomes a routine. It becomes just a set of daily habits. And uh, the question actually is that I would ask is, that are my habits healthy? Because it's very easy to uh, be focused on uh, on your work, on your actions, uh, and lose sight of uh, why you are doing this and how you are uh, um, kind of uh, contributing yourself to it, and what are you getting out of it? And uh, if it becomes a constant flow of just actions, then it is just a constant flow of actions. There is no excitement left in it. And then it's uh, very easy that this routine is uninteresting. And I see that many entrepreneurs fail in that phase mm -hmm. because um, really it, it, it's just boring. It's just uh, hard work. And if you are an entrepreneur, it's, it's unpaid hard work very often. Mm -hmm. And it really affects how you will feel mentally. And if you don't get the results as fast as you want, and if others are doubting about what you do because you do something differently and something innovative, then it's very easy to start uh, self-doubt. And I think that self-doubt is the greatest killer of businesses that is out there. And for me, the key has been always uh, becoming aware of what I feel, becoming aware of what I think, and then taking a pause taking a moment to reflect, taking a moment to see if it should be done the way others are telling me 
uh, taking a pause also to see what kind of results it's bringing. And sometimes I will change uh, the things I do, but sometimes I keep to it because I say that yes, the change is slow. Building a new market is slow. The only aspect that change is just maybe my relationship to this habit, to these patterns that I work with. Uh, I could see it as a routine, but I could see it also as a challenge of keeping a, a habit that brings a change. And making that little shift on how you acknowledge it can make a huge difference. So my question then to both of you is that, uh, I, you know, so Charles and I have had have had issues uh, that we've revealed. Um, Kerr, you've been uh, largely spared, which is a good thing. I'm interested in understanding then, so the general uh, chat, what's available out there says you know snap out of it ask yourself these questions have this awareness but clearly people don't have it or there wouldn't be so much struggle so i mean tomorrow when we talk uh, we'll look at some sp specific things but what kind of how 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 can how can someone watching this know that they're slipping off the edge what will they notice first I think uh, there are two different things. One is slipping off means that you have to keep track of it. I re recommend always keeping a diary, uh, writing down what you do and, and then comparing the results over time. You don't have to write a very long text as a, a young girls writer, kind of a novel uh, type of thing. Just make remarks of your work on a daily basis and then review those remarks. But the second thing is that I think people need to train their minds just as it trains the physical bodies. And this concept as such is very new, and we've been bringing this forward in, in, uh, on, on Wellness Orbit, uh, so that people can come, join the training, train their mind, and learn the warning signs at one hand. On, on, and on the other hand, learn the productivity tools and learn uh, tools which he helps them to keep their minds well. And I think that part, training your mind, is very necessary as our brains are, um, neuroplastic, as you very often mention on our other videos. Indeed. Neuroplastic means that we can train our brains and we should take advantage of it. So Charles, go on. Yeah, I think from my point of view, um, one endorsing everything that Kerr said, I think there's two other things that I would say. One is it's really powerful to be in some kind of group where there is commitment to mutual support doesn't necessarily have to be a group around a problem. It could be a group around an opportunity. But most of the work I do, we gather people in groups to work together on taking things forward. And we get to know each other. We get to check in with our moods every time we meet. We get to see the patterns. We get to encourage each other. So community, accountability, relationship are absolutely crucial. The second thing I think is very, very powerful is to have an attitude of gratitude and generosity. I don't know what the research is on this, but I do know that sitting down every morning and writing down three things I can be grateful for has been an incredibly powerful habit, even if you know, the only thing I can be grateful for on one particular day is I've got a hot cup of coffee. Actually, you build that habit of gratitude and you start to see more and more you can be grateful for. And my experience is that sets you in a great place. But that gratitude um, and then to leverage that, to build on that by accountability, that can be an incredibly powerful combination. That's fantastic. So we are basically talking about, so journaling has come up in a number of conversations we've had. Tomorrow what we'll do is we'll just um, carry on. I know you're talking there about your Inspire CEO's activity, Charles. So we'll talk about that as a potential thing and we'll talk about your brain training gym. Uh, so we'll be back uh, with the uh, final part of this discussion tomorrow. Have a nice day and I'll see you again.